Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Henry. Um, as Dr. Henry has reported, uh, our total number of cases in British Columbia is 231. I mean, with 45 identified since yesterday. That represents 144 cases in the Vancouver Coastal Health Authority, 58 in the Fraser Health Authority, 16 in Island Health, 9 in Interior Health, and 4 in the Northern Health Authority. Uh, most of that, those uh, patients, most of them, are resting at home in self-isolation, stable, and we hope, of course, getting better with the support of public health. We now have 13 patients in acute care. We had seven yesterday. And of these 237 cases, I believe it's still the case that five have recovered, meaning they've had two consecutive negative tests. Our testing continues. There's a lot of interest in the amount of testing that's done. As you know, we provide precise numbers every Friday. The reason for that is that we, w it's not, we want our people doing the work and not reporting on the work all the time. And we now have multiple locations, five locations around uh, the province that actually do the physical tests, that run the tests. Of course, many, many more that are, uh, that are collecting the tests around the province. We estimate that at least 17,000 people have been tested, and we will have precise numbers on Friday. But that gives you a sense, if you think back at the n amount of testing that's been done when we had our uh, presentation, I believe, on February 28th. We had done, I think, the most at that time, and it was about 1,000 uh, British Columbians had been tested uh, at that time, focusing, of course, on travel at the time. Then the following week, which was uh, approximately March 6th, I think, it was 2,000, and uh, last Friday it was 6,225. The number that uh, you're going to get received this Friday indicates the growing intensity of testing. And while our, intense, uh, our testing has become more strategic, we are doing more and more of it, and more and more of it is necessary. I want to underscore that uh, whether it's those who have recovered, those who have died, or those who have tested positive, their families, loved ones, friends, and neighbors, th those are the people that we have in our mind's eye and others who are facing this struggle who we have in our mind's eye when we, when we address these problems as a community. And we should all have them and all remember people, as Dr. Henry has said, who are especially vulnerable, in particular uh, seniors and our elders, those living in care homes, and that requires specific steps, but also people with chronic diseases, people living uh, with disabilities, particularly adults living with disabilities in our society, and many, many more. Um, I think what Dr. Henry said that is so important is that under these circumstances we have to continue to be calm, continue to be safe, continue to be generous with one another. I want to note uh, a couple of other uh, points here that are important in terms of information to you, that just to give you a sense of where we are. Our, um, our uh, self-assessment tool, which is on the BCCDC website, had at the end of yesterday 774,000 618 total users. That number is now, as I am told, close to a million as of right now. I want to emphasize what Dr. Henry said with respect to the blood supply and the need for people to give blood and the information out to the public. And this is one way that we can participate, those of us who uh, do not need to be staying at home at the moment, in supporting one another. I note um, there's a, in the South Asian community, there's a uh, community of people around the Sikh community that gives blood all the time that has uh, that is making a call out to the community for more blood donations there we thank them and we need uh, more people to join them uh, I, I wanted to note a couple other things again uh, our new 1-800 COVID-19 line uh, the calls answered yesterday was 1807 that has relieved some of the pressure on our um, on our 811 line, which is continuing to answer between three and four thousand calls a day. Um, finally, a couple of things uh, about uh, the actions that have been taken and the actions that will be taken to address this as a community. We have asked, and the provincial health officer has asked, and all of us have asked that everyone take part in the efforts uh, to uh, stop the spread of COVID-19 in British Columbia. And some of the actions that have taken place, if we th thought of these things a month ago or two months ago, are truly breathtaking. We've asked people not to travel outside of Canada. 
We've asked people if they travel outside Canada and return to self-isolate for 14 days. Mass gatherings have been reduced to 50. We've seen uh, decisions made cancelling school classes and the closure of bars and restaurants, the limitation of restaurants uh, around social licensing and so on. And municipalities and other levels of government have taken actions on, in their own right. And all of these are dramatic. And what, uh, uh, of course, and we wouldn't have imagined taking them months, a month ago or two months ago. But I think what I wanted to emphasize is, because there's always discussion about who's following and who isn't. First of all, I think an overwhelming majority of uh, people in BC are listening to this advice, because they know what it means for everyone else in their neighborhood and their community. And to those who have been reluctant or who have an occasion not follow the advice, I want to say that your neighbors and your friends and your families are counting on you to do just that. This next two weeks, what we do in this two weeks, every one of us, is important. There's a difference between self-isolation self and isolating yourself from the responsible action we all need to take together. So for today, today I would say for anyone who hasn't joined in this effort, who has been reluctant to join in these very explicit measures we can do to help one another, to, to help protect one another's health, I say it's not too late to join the fight. It's not too late to join the fight. We are asking you to take part today, to, to take your civic responsibility, but your responsibility and our responsibility as human beings to one another. We need you to join in, and we need you to do it now, today, this moment, without judgment, but we need everyone to take part in, what, in, the, in I think, what has been an inspiring call to action from Dr. Bonnie Henry and many others around the country. So, as we've understood from the beginning, it's clear every day we are all in this together. We are all in this together. We count on each other to take the appropriate precautions to keep one another safe. COVID-19 is, is a challenge for us all. And as each day brings news of our shared battle, of our shared obligation, of our shared obligation to one another, and of the seriousness of the fight we're in, we're learning what to do. We're learning how to adapt. And we're learning how much we mean to one another, every single person watching, and every single person in this room, and all of the other rooms in BC. If that shared experience, that shared responsibility that has to continue to drive us. Thank you very much. We look forward to taking your questions. Thank you, Minister Dix.